All right, and up next to uh, help us preview WrestleMania weekend, Jerry Evans. Jerry, how's it going? It's going. Thanks for having me on. It's always fun to do podcasts. Now, you, this is your, your maiden voyage on the, uh, the WrestleMania weekend podcast previews for Voices of Wrestling because you're, you're a new contributor here to the website. So uh, before we get going into the, uh, the show that we're going to talk about here, you want to let people know where they can, where they can follow you and, 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 and you know, read your work and all that other stuff. Yes, well, obviously they can find me in VoicesOfWrestling.com. That should be obvious at this point. But <laughs> they want bonus Jerry. Um, they can go to my Twitter at Jarius underscore Jer, where I have very lukewarm takes. Um, post allegedly cute photos of myself as bonus content and just other musings. And non-wrestling, I'm at WePlayRPGsPodcast.com, where me and a bunch of friends play some role play games yeah so so let, let, we'll talk about that a little bit because obviously the voice of wrestling people know they, they they can read your work uh at voices wrestling.com but tell me a little bit about the we play rpgs is this you know just just board games is this uh you know just... um, it's, it's rpgs it's like it's D and superhero themed. oh cool oh awesome so yeah you guys do the podcast there what what, what is a normal episode like for someone that might be kind of reg- somewhat interested in saying hey that that sounds like something i might want to listen to we have we have our main show which is called prismatic guard which is in a homebrewed world it's for a ragtag group of adventurers just doing good deeds and, you know, we have our inner drama at times. And then we have superhero games where I play a vigilante named Truth who has a power suit and um, takes down a corrupt mayor. There you go. So yeah. It's, it's fun stuff. It's one of the things I do when I'm not watching endless amounts of pro wrestling. And, you know, it's a it's fun. So if you all were willing to check it out, we would appreciate it. Um, our game master works tirelessly on this world and on this campaign and everything so i always make sure to plug things so a he can be supported and b so he doesn't wag his finger at me wondering why i'm not you know plugging (laughs) right right so (laughs) i I forgot to do that on one podcast and he's like you did you did plug this right i'm like yeah kind of (laughs) no don't listen but yes yes i did (laughs) it's like yeah exactly (laughs) so as we're doing with every one of uh that comes on here i want to do a little bit of background of your wrestlemania weekend uh experiences wrestlemania weekends that you have been to and now first off how many have you you been to wrestlemania weekends I've been to four WrestleMania weekends. Wow. Okay. So I know 2019, obviously, because voiceofwrestling.com, uh, they can read your thoughts on, on Gargano Cole, a, a show that and a match that I was at, I loved. I, I called it one of my favorite matches of all time. Uh, I may have jumped up and, and hugged you because I jumped up and hugged just about everybody in that arena that I could uh, <laughs> I, at, at certain points. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that that is an incredible match, and I'm I'm glad you were able to kind of uh, put into words what that meant for the people that were there live. Because I did notice, and 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 not to kind of t- go completely off track, but that is a match that I remember when I was done at the arena. And walking back and looking on Twitter, a lot of people were like, yeah, that was pretty good. That was okay. And I'm like, oh, my God, if you were here live, it was like the greatest experience ever. So it, I'm glad that it, you kind of were able to reflect that, that being live, it just felt there was something in that building on that day, right? Yes. And something with me, it, it's the best match I've ever seen live, hands down. Um, you know, it's one of those, like, there are certain tropes that WWE likes to throw in their matches, but in that match, they worked. Yeah, like, oh, Gargano, they were all the tropes, and they all worked perfect that that's why yeah, the tropes exist, just like, like, like we can yeah. make these work and then they did yeah right right no that, that's, you know, a, that's um, a great way to put it yeah um it was just excellent it was just amazing you know i hug strangers and i i, I don't even hug friends no i'm same way yeah i i, I yeah. don't i don't talk to other people usually because i don't want <laughs> yeah. to and yeah. it was like yeah when that match was over we just like me and my buddy were just jumping up and down just slapping hands and hugging i'm like what am i doing i don't want to touch these people and i was i was sick for like four weeks afterwards so I, i'm pretty <laughs> sure that's probably what the reason was so uh yeah, that's I remember, all right well worth it i well remember worth it. three things from that show the Gagano cole match which was incredible i remember more things but the three big things i remember that i remember the opening tag match and i remember taking forever to get down the escalator because we had one solitary escalator and we're all like and me and brian just sitting there going does this ever move <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> like we had a quicker time getting down the stairs at madison square garden Oh yeah, the garden, yeah, the garden was easy. Yeah, the garden was easy. The garden was easy. Yeah. Thank goodness, because we were ready to go home after that show. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. It's just the show at the end. It was like, what time is it? Yeah, let's let's get to the train before we miss it. <laughs> 
definitely yeah no i remember that show that was uh our flight was leaving or my flight was leaving at like 7 a.m the next morning yeah. and and yeah we went out afterwards and uh yeah. believe it or not we missed our morning flight so i had to change my flight to uh to another day. oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah i remember people leaving early to get to joey Genoa spring break they're like we gotta get spring break i'm like bye have yeah. a good time <laughs> Fun. Enjoy I'm gonna... missing an Okada main event. Yeah, you know? no, for sure. Paid but... money for. <laughs> uh, other than the 2019 WrestleMania weekend, what, what are some other memories that you have of, of, of prior WrestleMania weekends? Okay, um, I went to I went to 2012 WrestleMania 28 weekend, so okay. I got oh, yeah. to see Rock yeah. Cena live. That was my very first WrestleMania, so it's very special to me. Um, that was also Triple H Undertaker Hell in a Cell, which live. Let me tell you, now live it was a lot of fun. And I actually appear on TV for like 0.5 seconds. Oh yeah. Oh well, that because I'm actually going to be reviewing that uh, for the uh, the wrestling yeah, randomizer you, you, on at, Patreon. At 0.5 so. seconds, you can like see me face palm and exhaust you. <laughs> that's okay. All right, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to look for it then. Yeah, yep. It's like it's one of those like. I never noticed it. And one day a friend goes, look what I found. I'm like, please, please don't show me that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, um, but I love 28, at least the second half of 28. But being my first mania, quality didn't matter. I was like, oh, my God, I'm at mania. Like, I don't mean to be over dramatic, but mania was a goal for my, me for a long time. But for various reasons, I couldn't pull it off. So when I stepped into the stadium, I sat down and just. Try not to cry. It's like I'm here. Yeah, oh, and just Brian, a and Cody, massive stadium. Yeah, there are seventy, eighty thousand people yeah. all there. And and that's, that's an experience. You got to understand. Sure. I was still fighting the peak of my anxiety at that time. Right, right. Oh, I can't imagine eighty thousand people in a stadium. Like, yeah. I, like, but once I got my seat, it's like okay. As long as I don't move and strangers don't talk to me, I'll be fine. Yeah, right, right. And just I don't want to keep this going on forever. But just one of my funny moments. We had a fan complain the whole show behind us, and about, the complaint that we just looked at each other and just believe she's like why is everybody chanting cena sucks don't they know there's children here and we just about almost lost it at her <laughs> like do you watch wrestling yeah <laughs> this is your first wrestling show like, what yeah. are you doing? and then i went to wrestlemania 29 weekend um that weekend is amazing to me because i got to see jushin liger live oh right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. because he appeared at shakara as you know um quack and bush's surprise partner and everybody, apparently a lot of people there already knew Liger was going to be a surprise partner. I can be oblivious as hell and sometimes have no better. clue. That's sometimes I better. Had, I mean, honestly, yeah, it's probably better no that you clue. didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Comes I had no clue and you know. I I geeked the hell out. Oh, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah, don't know, just know the Liger's coming. Of all time. Yeah, yeah. And this is my favorite wrestler of all time. And <laughs> right. here I am seeing Liger at a Shakara show. WrestleMania weekend, you know, it's just like, oh my god, it's Liger, it's Liger, and I barely was able to give him a high five. Like it wasn't great. Like we barely touched, but it touched enough. That I was like, I touched him, and, and Brian's like, please don't have. I'm never washing my hand again. Moment, please, <laughs> like, I won't. But it was, it was still great. And then, um, what else from that weekend? Oh, that weekend we also kind of had a jerk move where we had a long line to get into a Shimmer show, and these Canadian fans in front of be behind us were called the A Team. You know, E H instead of A mm. because they're Canadian. Bad joke, but I laugh because I laugh <laughs> at bad jokes. But the, the line was so long it circled. Oh boy. Well these Canadians look at it and goes, I bet if we act like we're the front of the line, they'll buy it. So we acted like we were the front of the line and they let us in first. There you go. Nice. That works. And then we never saw them again. <laughs> like, awesome. They got us into the show and like we're done. Yeah, bye. <laughs> and then WrestleMania thirty which is probably the best weekend I've had because it was in New Orleans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I we went to Ring of Honor. We went to – okay, I won free front row tickets to a Shimmer show, which was fun, except for the horrifying realization that it was front – that the front row I was in was right in the middle, right where the camera was could see me oh yeah so i yeah. can't watch that show because i'm looking at myself the entire <laughs> oh show i'm the and same like, way yeah yeah i could and this is the first time i ever had to get out of my seat to avoid a dive and i was very bad at it and the fans like this is your first time isn't it? i'm like yes yeah. so like yeah we can tell I was like, thanks <laughs> you know yeah. um and also i because i sat in the front row i got i missed me i got the i ended up missing meeting brian alvarez because he sat right behind my friends who didn't have front row seats Oh, there you so go. That's, yeah, that's uh, yeah. But I that's actually been that New Orleans one has been a common that that of the answers we've gotten so far. And it makes me very jealous that that I didn't uh, 
There was a chance that I had to go to that one, and I ended up being like, ah, eh, there was something else going on, or I forget what it was exactly, but I remember there was a, a definite opportunity for me to go, and for whatever reason, I just didn't, yep. and and that's the one that ever, I mean, we have had that an answer more than almost any other one of people saying that yeah. is the one that, the, the thing that they mentioned is like how every show was like, you know, two blocks away, and it's in freaking New Orleans, so while you're walking those two blocks to get to the next show, it's fucking New Orleans, so yeah. it's just like, it's awesome. You know, we so. had incredible food, we went to some good wrestling shows, um... And I think the WrestleMania memory I have is, of course, this is where the Undertaker streak ended. Sure. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And oh, my gosh, you know, just I thought they had screwed up the finish being there live. I sincerely thought, like, there's no way that was supposed to happen because we didn't, you know, there's no bell rung. And then it's flashed from the screen to one, you know, the the one in his loss column and the whole crowd just gassed. Yeah, that I remember that. I mean, that watching live, uh, you know, watching on, 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 on demand or whatever, I remember that moment of, um, you know, people, there was no noise when the pinfall happened. There was just no noise. And then it, it, people are just kind of looking around and it's like this weird silence. And then, yeah, all of a sudden that screen comes up with the one. You just hear this like, ah, <laughs> it just like shrieks yeah. as people just can't believe it. Oh, my God, what? Yeah. No, there's no and, way. Like like that? Like, got, like that? Yeah. yeah. And I got three. I got three specific memories about the Undertaker losing. One is my friend Dave is the biggest Undertaker fan of all time that I've known. He was there with us. He's a jinx. Poor guy was crushed. He's a jinx. Poor, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Poor guy was crushed. You know. And um, the second thing I remember is after that there was a Divas match. And when they announced the Divas match, I can hear like five rows in front of me. Someone just scream, "Who the fuck cares?" Yeah, yeah that was the. I mean, there there's been some pretty terrible like you know, women's wrestling placements in different shows. Like, I know they followed, like, I think it was Trish and... I forget who... It was Trish yeah. Lita and Jazz, I want to say, or something like that, that had to follow Rock Hogan in Toronto, and that was, like, you know, a funeral was going on because everybody was just, like, that yeah. emotion dump. Nothing and, is... The, that is the ultimate, like, worst booking ever is coming out after Undertaker's streak, and it's, yeah, like, and, Kelly and Kelly and, and like, whoever, I, you know. I to be clear. I legit feel bad for the women. Yeah, oh, for sure, absolutely. Like that, but at the same time, I laughed at the comment because I could understand everybody feeling that way at right. that moment. And the final thing I remember is the whole – it became an in-joke. Every time something went wrong that weekend, we were all looking to go, well, what the fuck can we do to Undertaker loss? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> like, we live in a post-streak world now. Right, Nothing right, makes right. sense. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. So that's uh, that's awesome. So that's uh, you, you, you're you a veteran of uh, the WrestleMania weekends, but uh, you are not going this year, correct? You are one of the oh, no. many, many um, people not going this weekend for no, probably I, the right I, reasons. So. I'm, co- I'm very conflicted. Like, I'm going to watch a lot of WrestleMania weekend shows. But there's a part of me like, should they really be happening? <laughs> you know? I, yeah, I have the same one. Uh, I, I have the same conflict as well. I mean, a lot of the shows, which is cool, a lot of them are going to be outdoors, and, and they, they seem yeah. to be saying that I, they're going to follow I, stuff properly. I know they're going to do what they stuff, can, but, yeah. but it's still a lot of wrestling fans in one place yeah. for an extended Well, ideally, time. yeah, and a international travel or, 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 yeah, like large domestic travel into one location and then dispersing back to your area is... Uh, not exactly what you want to do during a pandemic, so ideally yes. the opposite of what you'd want to do during a pandemic. But, alas, we got a job to do, so uh, let's jump to Saturday, April 10th, 11 a.m. This is from The Collective uh, here at the Cuban Club in New York City. Uh, I'll be on Fight TV, uh, their collective package on Fight uh, as well, and it's Effie's Big Gay Brunch. Now, this is the, I believe, what is this, the second or third uh, Big uh, the, Gay Brunch? The Planet 2. Okay, so yeah, the, the first Planet one was two. WrestleMania Weekend 2019. Uh, of course, and I guess there was supposed to be one last year, but obviously, you know, the thing. Well, yeah, the last <laughs> last year's one. Um, yeah, I can't. Remember. I know they had a big gay block for the twenty four hour. Stream. Yeah, correct, right, right, right. But this is a different um, lineage. This is a brunch lineage. This is the big gay brunch lineage. Then this is a brunch. You know, it's bigger, it's gayer, and there better be freaking brunch. <laughs> there better like, be. Yeah. When so, I turn on this show, yeah, Waffle should appear in front of me. Yeah, because I don't know if you remember the controversy. I don't know if you attended this, but 2019, Pancakes and Pile Drivers, there was no fucking pancakes. Yeah, and and let's, and, and just to alienate some listeners, waffles are superior to pancakes. I just want to get that off um, my chest. You know, I would agree with you. So you, you're, yeah, you look, and I pancakes are... Pancakes are the Seth Rollins of breakfast food. They're good, but they're not as great as people tell you they are. Yes, there's ways that you can make pancakes good, and sometimes they're good, but waffles are... are you know what you're getting pretty consistently with waffles, yeah. so... Especially when you have your own waffle maker, which I do. Oh, so fantastic. Yes. So let's let's go over the show here real quick. Um 
and then we'll kind of we'll, we'll go match by. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna run over all the matches. Then we'll kind of go through and talk about some matches that you're really looking forward to. Uh, things that you're really kind of uh, um, you know seeking out here uh, again. 11 no a.m. Uh, Saturday, April 10th, from the Cuban Club uh, in Ybor City. That's again going to be on Fight TV and uh, streaming on uh, the, the fights uh, collective package as well. Uh, Effie versus Ace Perry, Soul on a pole match. Uh, AJ Gray versus Billy Dixon, Pop Color, uh, Pop. Pup collar match, easy for me to say. Uh, MV Young versus JD Drake. Uh, Peros Twink Hunter tag gauntlet. I'm gonna have to ask you about that one there uh, in a bit. Dark Sheik versus AC Mac. Uh, Eat Surreal, the uh, the former uh, still life with apricots and pears uh, versus Devin Monroe. Uh, and the official host is gonna be Pollo Del Mar. So what uh, what are you looking for most with uh, Effie's uh, big gay brunch? Um. I'm gonna, let me cover right now. This is probably not clarify. Um, let me just say right now, this is probably the show I'm looking forward to the most. I'm not saying it's gonna be the highest indoor like best show of the weekend, but it's gonna be my personal favorite for various reasons. Um, matches itself. Um, I'm looking forward to Devin Monroe versus Edith Surreal big time. Um, I really like them both. I really like Devin Monroe a lot. Yeah, I'm I'm right with you. I mean, Devin Monroe was was somebody I think. I, th- I think it was the collective weekend. I think it was the one in September or, or whatever. And, and that was, I think the first time I saw Devin Monroe ever was in, it was either for the culture or it was during the big gay block, like you're saying. And, and I was very impressed by Devin Monroe. I thought the, the, the Lucha, the high flying, the speed, the athleticism yeah. really stood out to me. So I was like, Oh, okay. I want to, I kind of want to see more of, of Devin Monroe. And, and from what I've seen since then, I've, I've really liked it. So that has the opportunity. It's real. Obviously uh, most people I think listening have probably, Seen Edith Surreal, even though maybe you don't, not under the Edith Surreal. Um, the gimmick hasn't changed, right? It's just the name that has changed. From, from, as far as I know, the name has changed, um, which makes sense because, you know, she's been going through her journey as well. And I think that's why I appreciate her so much because sure. I kind of, you know, I am, you know, as people who read me probably know by now, I am transgender. So having that out there just really inspires me and helps me. So I really gravitate towards Edith quite a bit. Yeah, so, and 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 she's a, a tremendous talent as well. It can really, yeah. in, in a way that probably people who you might see her come out and go, ah, oh, you know, I, how is she going to run? And very technical, uh, very well trained. Obviously, coming from you know the Chikara school and coming from those, you know, the, the rest, yeah. you know, from, from that area. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited about this match because that, you know, other big gay brunch is going to be. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of ha ha. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff like that. But this is legitimately a match that I think has the potential yeah. to have that aspect to it, the, the little bit of a tongue in cheek, you know, wink wink nudge aspect to it, but also be a really really good wrestling match as well. So I'm right with you. That yes. that probably is my most anticipated match of this entire show. It is definitely my highest. Um, I'm really into Envy Young versus J.D. Drake. Um, I'm really glad to see J.D. Drake on this show. I just like seeing J.D. Drake pop up anywhere, honestly. So I think that could be fun. And um, I, I got to admit, um, just because I really love the end, the Peros Twink Hunter Tag Gauntlet. Yeah, you got to tell me, what, what, what do we got here with this pair? Do you, do you know anything? Can you add anything to the other uh, Peros Twink Hunter Tag Gauntlet? Um, well, Pero, Pero entered a Twink Gauntlet or Battle Royal. My memory is a little jaded right now. Um, At the previous Big Gay Brunch and pretty much went to town on the Twinks. <laughs> a statement I never thought I'd say on a wrestling podcast. <laughs> there you go. Hey, um, you know what? If but probably- he went to town and then he eventually lost. So now, you know, Pero still has beef with the Twinks. And this is going to be, I guess we're going to get a bunch of twink tag teams trying to take them down. Yeah. This and is, I really like Paro and I really like the end. Yeah. Oh yeah. For people that don't, you know, Paro is, is really someone that I think, you know, flies in the face of a lot of stereotypes because Paro will fuck you up. Paro is stronger than anybody listening to this show. Strong, you know what I mean? Like that, the idea that, you know, Paro is going to be in this twink show and on big gay brunch or whatever. And you probably, people that don't know who Paro is or have never seen him before. Uh, you'll see pretty quickly. I mean, he's a gigantic, Gigantic human being, huge yes. beard, and the story here is awesome because it's going to be a bunch of little guys trying to go, and he is just going to fuck all of them up. And I yes. could not wait for and it. And I'm here awesome. for it. I'm yeah. here for it. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. Um, Pero, I don't remember where I first saw him, but I had I knew nothing about him, and he just caught me off guard. Was like, oh my gosh, I need more of this man. You know, it's just like. And then, then I realized he had a tag team partner. I'm like, can this get any better? <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. And I think the, the story of Peril is really cool, too, because it's like, you know, 
you see Perro, you, you you see you know what he looks like, and I think one of the cool parts is, and and he's talked about this on Twitter as well. He's like, yeah, I'm I'm really gay, like I'm really 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 gay, like <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I love the, it so much, right? I love it's, it. So you know, much. he's not wearing pink. He's not. There's nothing of like the perfect, you know, the, what you would think of, what, what a normal person that you know a normal yeah. kind of naive person would think. Oh, here's this gay man. And it's like, no, here's a, like a giant beefy dude with a giant beard who's gonna fuck you up you know what i mean so it's yeah. it's really in that way it's really really cool that it's like you know, whatever you think it because it reminds yeah. people i don't mean it talk of no you, no I'm no sorry. go ahead no no you're, you're it the reminds people here. there is no gay look right exactly you know there's no oh that person looks you know we come in all shapes and sizes mm-hmm. we come in all you know fashions we we could be around and you not even know it because we just look like you. Right. Exactly. You know, you know, um, and, and I believe Effie versus Ace Perry. I like, um, be- because, um, Ace Perry attacked Effie at big gay block. So this match actually has some background, some build. Yeah. We got some build a big gay brunch. You thought we don't always brunch. get at no. these WrestleMania shows. Yeah. Usually it's one and done matches or just dream matches or just, um, I'm trying to say just about being assaulting, but, um, you know, gimmicky, um, themed matches. Yeah, just some stuff that's kind of thrown together with no real rhyme or reason yeah. sometimes. Too. Yeah, I remember when we, before WrestleMania got canceled last year, I would look at some of the shows going, not, I don't want to be insulting, but you're you're trying too hard now. <laughs> right. You know, but then you got shows like this where I feel they are legit important. Um, no, for sure. There, there's definitely some build here. Uh, the yeah. soul on a pole here with Effie and Ace Perry again, as you said, has a little bit of build to it. Uh, what can you tell me about the pup collar match? AJ Gray versus Billy Dixon. I am um, unfamiliar with this at so all. So. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know what I can add. Um, I really like both. I like Billy Dixon more than I like AJ Gray. Um, nothing against nothing against AJ Gray. Please don't tweet at me. Um, <laughs> um, but I watched Billy Dixon recently at the Cassandro Cup and really enjoyed him. And um, I think they're going to both work hard. I think they're going to, when I say hard, I mean both, you know, the work's going to be hard and some of the shots at each other are going to probably be hard um, <laughs> for sure. I like that we got a lot of variety for this show um, of different wrestling styles and types. Yeah, and, I'm right with you. Yeah, I think it's, it's it, to me, it's it's a really important and a really cool show as well. Because again, like I said with the Paro thing is where I think there, there might be a wrestling fan out there. There might be somebody listening that has this idea of what you know, an yeah. Effie's big gay brunch is going to be like, but yeah, there's, I mean, there's JD Drake, there's AJ Gray, there's Effie, who's, I, I, I think, you know, very different, very unique style there. There's Edith Surreal, there's Devin Monroe. I mean, there is so much diversity and yes. so many different people that look different, different yep. races, different genders, and it's just all coming together and unifying in this one show yes. that, that's so diverse in, in, in that way. So I'm really excited to see this. Yeah, and I do want to just because I just mentioned every other match so so far. I don't want to leave out Dark Sheik versus AC Mac because that would feel bad. Um, I think that has potential to be very good. Um, AC Mac is good, and every time I watch Dark Sheik, Dark Sheik gets me off guard because I forget that I enjoy Dark Sheik, and then it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's like I do like this. All right, so and. I have always stated wrestling is for everybody, but mm-hmm. not every show is going to um, catch everybody's eye. And this show is definitely not going to be something that everybody's going to be into. But for someone like me, this show, I just want, I both want and need this show. Um, I don't want to get too, like, serious. Oh, no, go episode, ahead. No, feel free if you, if but, you like, um, yeah. You know, representation obviously matters. And as someone who cause, who is still for lack of a better term, baby trans and baby bi, just seeing bi, trans, non-binary, you know, LGBTQIA plus wrestlers put themselves out there and produce their own show and saying, we're here, we're making our own show, but we should be in more places and everywhere, really means a lot to me. It reminds me that I'm not alone in this wrestling community. And I know that rationally, but just seeing it presented is a good comforting thing. For sure, and I think that's a really cool thing about the, this this year's WrestleMania weekend as well. And we saw it a little; we were going to see it a little bit with twenty twenty WrestleMania weekend, but it does feel like there is a lot of representation of a lot of different 
you yeah. know, not only different companies showing up, but different types of people, different types of, you know, you know, with for the culture yeah. coming back again and being a consistent now, hopefully WrestleMania weekend show, Effie's Big Gay Brunch being a consistent WrestleMania weekend show. There's enough opportunities here where, it, you know, because there's so many different shows and there's so many people coming down here, you have an opportunity to book a show like this and, 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 and be able to to make it work. And, and I think the biggest thing is that it's not for people. You know, it's not like, oh, well, we can only find, you know, four gay wrestlers. It's like that's a pretty loaded show with a lot of talent on here. So it's like that's yes. got to be really cool to see as well and it's it's not this like it's really not i i i I don't want to call it a gimmick show because it's really not it's just like hey you know we got these people and and they fit into this you know criteria of what we're trying to do with the show with and and yeah it it doesn't look like a show that's forcing itself to oh well we have to it's like no this is a really good show on paper and it doesn't matter what these people are it's just you know they're all unified by 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 one thing here and it's really really cool yeah and i have a lot of respect for effie for putting together because he's clearly put a lot of thought into this show yeah. oh for sure he's clearly put a lot of thought onto what the show is going to mean what the show can achieve and really like i was a big fan and i spoke positively and highly of the first big gay brunch i think wrestling wise this show wrestling quality wise can blow it out of the water oh though. no doubt in my mind yeah if and i think make, and that's not me knocking the previous show obviously i spoke highly above about it yeah no it's a good thing i mean honestly i think it's a good thing that this blows because I, I i'm right with you i think this blows the 2019 show out of the water and i think that's a good thing that either we've had more people in the last two years that have come out and, and said yeah i'm gay or you know whatever or yeah. it doesn't matter like it, it whatever it is like there are more wrestlers and there are better wrestlers that, that can fit into a show like this now and i think that to me, the only way that you could see that is is not negatively on, on 2019. Like, you needed that 2019 show to kind of yeah. break through and say, hey, we're going to do this thing, and we don't care, and yeah. we're going to do it. But And now you have so many people that are open to, to, to being on the show and open to you know their lifestyle. And I think that's tremendous that, yeah, this show is legitimately, yeah. on paper, one of the better in-ring shows of the entire weekend. And it doesn't even... It doesn't even matter that it's gay. You know what I mean? Like you can watch this and yeah. not even give a shit that, you know, that people are gay. Exactly. It's like, who cares? And, Whatever. Um, it's a good wrestling show. One- you know? And just one quick co- correction, just because I finally noticed it. Um, the first show was actually 2020 in Indianapolis. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I, I because just... that's the, remember it got originally canceled for this Wrestle for WrestleMania, and then when they had the collective later on. Got it. Okay. 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 So it yeah. wasn't actually. I just want to make sure yeah, people, yeah. I don't want a lot of people tweeting at me. Hey, for someone who's right, a fan right, of this right, show, right. you don't even know the year. I know the year. I'm just <laughs> bad at. I'm just always hesitant to correct people in case I'm actually. Yeah. Wrong. Sorry. I I got mixed up in my own. So that that is. No, my you're fault, good. You're yeah. good. You you mean well, and that's the important. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I like to think. So. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So that is uh, that is Effie's uh, big gay brunch again. As we said, that is going on on Saturday, April tenth at eleven a.m. Pretty much by itself. That's the first show on Saturday. Uh, you have IWTV, the uh, Tony Deppin's Beer House, coming on up 12 p.m. Uh, so both those will be streaming around the same time. But, yeah, you, there's a pretty good opportunity there. Uh, if you're waking up on Saturday and you're ready to kind of get wrestling going, a uh, great opportunity to watch that show. It's not up against a bunch of other things. Uh, and, yeah, you got time, obviously, before WrestleMania. I, I hope to God WrestleMania is not starting at 11 a.m. on Saturday, yeah. but I guess we'll see. Uh, yeah. But, uh, um- I- yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to watch it on replay because I got scheduled to work that day. And I really didn't and I didn't really want to see how the conversation go. I went to my boss going, so, hey, I want to watch a gay theme. <laughs> right, wrestling I want to watch Effie's big Saturday game. Brunch, yeah. Look, look, there's a twink gauntlet going on at 11 a.m. And I got to watch some twinks get destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I might as well. Yeah. I may want to just go to work for that one instead. And just you know. like, no, I'll just go to work and watch this one replay. Yeah. That might. Be yeah. There. Yeah. Hey, I got to see the twink. Panel, right? <laughs> like, I see, yeah. Right. Because <laughs> I, I know for a fact that's the first thing I, my brain will go with. My boss asks why I want the day off. Yeah. That, I'm, I'm that would just leave some fun Royal, conversations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So again, Effie's Big Gay Brunch, 11 a.m. Saturday, April 10th. Uh, Jerry, thank you so much for helping us uh, preview this. And uh, anything else that you're looking forward to uh, this WrestleMania weekend, uh, as well as any other shows that you're really kind of making sure that you're um, going to watch? I'm definitely going to be watching Bloodsport. Um, as you, people know who've read my articles, and thank you for reading them, um, I'm huge into the Bloodsport concept, and I'm really looking forward to Moxley Barnett allegedly finally happening. Um, you know, after two attempts not working out, we're finally getting the match. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to spring RSP's spring break because um we're finally probably getting the end of Ricky Shane Page versus Nick Gage, and it's gonna be violent, and bloody, pretty story heavy, and you know Nick Gage is gonna fuck him up. Yeah, and I oh, am yeah. looking forward to that. <laughs> um, and um individually, I am looking forward to Bianca Belair versus Shasa Banks. 
I am looking forward to I had something and it's gone. I'm looking forward to Cole or you know Kyle O'Reilly mm-hmm. unsanctioned. I hope Cole gets some pointers from his, you know, from Britt Baker. <laughs> You know, um, because she knows a thing or two about unsanctioned matches. Yeah, she does. Yeah, and, she's she can yeah. definitely bragging the family and see. Yeah, see. Hopefully, if if, if you know her uh, match is better at the end of the month. Yeah. match, dear. I wonder who came up with that idea. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. But um, you know, and I'm pretty sure there's other things I'm not thinking about right now because there's just so much. There is a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, honestly, you know, if, for all jokes aside, there is enough in this WrestleMania weekend with enough shows going on, enough matches, enough talent that there is definitely something yeah. just about for anybody. And I, I think every show has at least you know a few matches to me that that are going to be yeah. pretty interesting. So, and let me be a hypocrite here and just tell people: don't feel like you have to watch everything. No, don't. I'm please. saying that now, <laughs> and then I'm going to probably proceed to watch everything because I'm about to have access to everything. <laughs> so, it is certainly you know? yeah. With WWE TV and fight, yeah, you have the opportunity to watch just about everything that we're going to talk about here. And then, then obviously everything else will be on on, on Peacock or, yep. or on television. Yep. So yeah, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a message. You're going remember, Jerry. You can't write about everything. Come on, <laughs> yeah, but I want to. Yeah, yes. But I want to. I, I only wrote three thousand words. You ever edited it to 1,500? Oh, come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> so before we uh, before we depart here, uh, do you want to let people know again where they can uh, where they can follow you, where they can see some of your work, and and some of the non wrestling stuff uh, you do as well? Yes. If you want bonus, Jerry is Jarius underscore Jer on Twitter. Um, again, very lukewarm takes, um, pictures of me, other various opinions. I will warn you just to be polite. I do get political at times. So just be, you know, just know that, please. And I also post pictures of my food because food is delicious and I've been improving my cooking. So you all get to look at it and wish you could have it. And I am also at WePlayRPGsPodcast.com where I play a D&D homebrewed world with my friends and we play superhero games. And there'll be other content added as we come up with ideas and continue to realize we don't want any free time in our lives. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, Jerry, thank you so much for coming on here and, and helping us preview uh, Effie's Big Gay Brunch. You have, a, you have a great WrestleMania weekend. You too. Thank you. The madness of March has ended, but that doesn't mean winning season is over at mybookie.ag. It's April, and guys, they have WrestleMania odds. So if you want to get in on the action for WrestleMania, perfect opportunity to do so right now at mybookie.ag. Use that promo code VOICES. Again, it's promo code VOICES at mybookie.ag, and you'll secure a deposit bonus up to $1,000. Again, promo code VOICES, mybookie.ag. For a deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars. College basketball is over, but the NBA is hot and heavy. NHL is going strong. MLB just got started, and as I said, WrestleMania odds are up there. No matter the sport, no matter the minute, my bookie puts the action in your hands with in-game live betting. There's also thousands of lines, odds, prop bets, and all that stuff that you can do to turn game day into payday. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. With my bookie again, mybookie.ag promo code voices to secure that deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars, and make sure again that you get in on the action for WrestleMania weekend. Promo code voices mybookie.ag deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars. And continuing our look at WrestleMania weekend, well, I guess concluding our look at WrestleMania weekend, I should say it's finally over. The marathon of WrestleMania weekend uh, is over, and it concludes with. A marathon of WrestleMania with three nights of WrestleMania, two t- <laughs> two literal nights of WrestleMania, and then a third lopped on at the beginning here. Uh, thank you for joining us here, Andrew Rich. Andrew, how's it going? Hey, Rich. It's good to be back here. Um, I'm doing well. Uh, it's funny. Last time I was on uh, a Mania weekend preview show, Mania 34 in New Orleans, uh, which feels like forever ago at this point, and uh now we're back together again for uh, WrestleMania Super Spreader. Let's go, baby. Come on. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Let's do it. Get into it. Slap, clap, clap. All right. Uh, before we get into uh, the two slash three night event that is WrestleMania, uh, for people that do not know anything about Andrew Rich and they don't know about Music of the Met, this is your opportunity to give them those plugs and let them know where they should follow you and where they should listen to you. Yeah, sure. So my main thing for Voices of Wrestling right now is I host a podcast called Music of the Met. It is a wrestling and music podcast, very straightforward. Uh, it comes out every other Tuesday, and uh, the most recent episode, does this drop on Tuesday? This is which... going to be dropping on Tuesday, yeah, so I think it'll be the uh, day okay, of. Good. Yeah, it'll be the same day as, as, as the yep. new Music of the Mat. So. so the new episode is, very fittingly, a, an episode about WrestleMania, the album, 
uh, with uh, the great Joe Gagne. Uh, we covered all the tracks on there. So if you want to hear us talk about uh, Bret Hart doing a ballad and <laughs> uh, Undertaker, you know, talking over New Jack Swing music and all that fun stuff, it's on that uh, there. So it's on Apple. It's on Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts pretty much. Uh, you can follow the, the show on Twitter at Music of the Mat. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Andrew T. Rich. Uh, and I have various articles and, and writing stuff for uh, VoicesOfWrestling.com. So there you go. I, uh, I snuck in. Obviously, you, you upload the episodes a little bit early, and I was able to sneak in about half of, of uh, this week's episode. Oh. <laughs> so uh, it is awesome. It is great, as, as every episode of Music of the Mad is. But this one, yeah, really, really. It fit the moment, and it's just a so ridiculous app. Like, people might think, oh, you're exaggerating. No, it's Undertaker singing over New Jack Swing. Like, it is not. It's, it's the it's weirdest. Thing, yeah. It's a very weird album. It is, it, it, it's right up there and, and maybe right neck and neck with WWE Originals as the most, like, why did you do this? Yeah. Like, who, who, who's this for? <laughs> like, who wants this? I, I talked about it with Joe. You know, we talked about how this album is sort of like the bridge between the wrestling albums from the 80s and Full Metal, which was the first traditional album of just wrestling themes. Um, but it's also a precursor, a precursor, as you said, to Originals, which we also have done in the podcast a few years ago. So it's this, it's this weird thing where it took WWE forever to put out just an album of straight-up themes. So we got this, this strange collection of songs here, um, but still oddly catchy, as, as you'll hear on the, on the show. So... Look forward to that one, folks. It definitely works. I have, a, I have a cassette of that somewhere at my parents' house, so I can try to uh, <laughs> try to track that down at some point. <laughs> I really enjoyed that cassette back in my uh, my early days. But uh, before we get into WrestleMania itself, uh, we have been asking everybody on the show so far, and I I pretty easy a- answer from you because I was with you during one of these, but. Uh, <laughs> WrestleMania weekend memories, memories of, of of going to a WrestleMania weekend. I know, of course, you were at the New York one because uh, you were there, and I saw you, and I hung out with you. But uh, any other picture, WrestleMania yeah. weekends? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, it's all there. Uh, but uh, memories of that WrestleMania weekend, and have you been to any others, or was that your first one ever? That was my first one ever. Uh, I am, I have typically been a homebody for, for most of my life. I only started going to concerts really like five years ago. Um, and I've been to scant wrestling shows in my entire life. Uh, but I figured, you know, since Mania was going to be in New York uh, two years ago, it's close enough where I, I wanted to go. I wanted to have my first Mania weekend. Um, and, and thank God I did, because uh, at this point, <laughs> uh, we are a long ways off from that. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, this year, it just it, it doesn't feel like a Mania weekend, Rich, does it? Because the lack of buzz, the lack of people traveling and wrestlers flying in because of the pandemic, of course, um, the lack of major promotions running as well, lack of, of star power on the indies. Uh, it feels like we, I think we've reached a low point here. Um, and the pandemic, you can't help that, of course, but it just it still feels that way, Rich. No, absolutely, yeah. And that's uh, uh, over the course of the uh, seven or eight hours that this show is going to be <laughs> of us trying very desperately uh, to get you into it. It's it's all, for me as like a viewer, and I think that, that we're really kind of, sp- in, in prior years, we a lot of times were speaking to people that were traveling there, people that were coming, people that were going, you know, people that were maybe on the fence uh, about potentially going or making a last minute trip or whatever. It's obviously not that, dude. I mean, this year we're really targeting it to like, hey, you're sitting at home and you have nothing to do this weekend. You know, is there anything that you can watch? Is there something that, you know, you can really sink your teeth into this WrestleMania weekend? And and while I think there is some stuff, it, it, it is definitely lacking, like, in terms of like a show where you can just say you can sit down and for three hours you're going to get a really, really good show. I feel like every show has a few matches. There's some shows that are kind of cool, but we don't know exactly how it's going to go. It's a very weird one. And, yeah, there aren't your kind of traditional companies that you can just kind of say, hey, no doubt I'm going to sit down on Friday at 7 p.m. And for the, the that amount of time and that night, I'm going to see an awesome wrestling show. It's just you can't guarantee that this year. So it's it, it's definitely weird. And, 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 yeah, as we're approaching it and getting even closer to it, as we're now in the official week of it and obviously the show releasing a few days prior to it kind of officially kicking off it's it people are trying to get it going people are trying to kind of stoke the flames but at the end of the day it's still pretty hard to kind of get people super super excited about this uh you know pandemic mm-hmm. related you know <laughs> traveling uh wrestling show which actually i mean that that leads into the first question i was going to ask you about wrestlemania uh, as well with obviously it being a two-night event following the you know up you know last year's two-night event 
uh, of WrestleMania, but under very di- different circumstances, is we are going to have fans in attendance uh, at Raymond James Stadium uh, in Tampa Bay. And and my question to you is, and, and I don't know if anybody really has an exact answer for this. We're all just kind of guessing and and seeing what's going to happen. But how do you think the fans are going to react? Because there's there's a school of thought that fans are just going to like boo every heel and cheer every baby face because they're just happy to be at wrestling again and happy to be making noise again and happy to be spreading COVID all over the place. Like, there's there's that idea. And then there's the idea that, like, yeah, they might do that for a few minutes, but then at the end of the day, they're going to be WWE fans and they're <laughs> going to kind of say, you know, chant for Daniel Bryan and shit on Drew McIntyre. And, like, wh- wh- where, where do you land on it? Do you think people are just going to be happy to be there or do you think we're going to get kind of standard, smarky wrestling fans? I'm curious about that, too. Um my, my feeling is I think there will be generally kind of a feel-good atmosphere. People want to get back into it after, you know, so long away. Um, but there's also that, that that deep part of me that just hopes and begs and prays that they start to turn on the people that they want to cheer for them. And they start chanting for Brian. They start, start booing Edge. And they start cheering for Lashley and booing Drew or whatever. So, um, you know, if, if they stick to – being the fans that they were before the shutdowns, before they they went they went away, I think we'll get some some fun moments there and some some Vince aneurysms for sure <laughs> as he's backstage. But um, but I think you know, at, 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 like you said, at first I think there will be a good atmosphere, you know, overall amongst the people and they want to, you know, they want to get back into it and, and dip their feet back into it. I think so. I, I know I'm definitely looking forward to just having like actual noise and actual fans in the building or whatever. Obviously oh, the yeah. circumstances kind of stink and it's, it's not perfect, but I'm, I'm sure mm-hmm. everybody attending there has been vaccinated and, and, and definitely cleared. I'm sure that, you know, not anybody in, mm-hmm. in Florida, especially, uh, but no, you know, like I'm just happy to have like actual fans in there. I'm, ha- I'm happy to actually feel kind of, cause I know from baseball, we we're, you know, we're in the midst of kind of the baseball's opening week or whatever. And just the few games, where there's been and yeah the buildings are 20 percent full or 25 percent full other than texas of course but like other than this game yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as we're recording this Ubley. there's a full stadium somewhere but yeah, other than that one uh but the, uh, it just the atmosphere is just totally different it just has a different it, it it's the closest to normal things have felt in in in, in quite some time uh and it is comforting to see that so it'll be it will be nice to have a, a, a somewhat filled you know stadium cheering and, and, and getting ready and getting excited about wrestling. The problem, though, is it's it's WrestleMania and it's WWE, and, and it's hard to say exactly what... I really don't have it. The, the thing that I'm always... And, and, and I, it, it stands true with even the independent shows as well, and it's a big question for this WrestleMania show. Who are these fans that are coming? Because like I've yet to meet anybody who's actually going down there. I don't know who these people are, and that that leads me to believe that I don't I, I don't know. Like, are these just your super casual fans? Are these people just looking for something to do? Are these your hardcore hardcore wrestling fans that are like, fuck it, I don't care if I get COVID, I'm going to WrestleMania. Like, I'm I'm very curious what the makeup of the fans are and 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 actually you know how many people are actually there as well because obviously tickets you know we haven't really heard officially you know exactly where tickets are at or or whatever and i think you could still get some here and there uh the cheap seats seem to have sold out a little bit quicker than the expensive seats or whatever how many of those are on secondary markets how many of those are trying on on the resales i have no idea i'm just very curious what it's going to look like and who's going to be in that that stadium for for Mm -hmm. these two nights of wrestlemania yeah i mean i imagine the independent shows will be a lot of the hardcores because you know, that's what the independent shows are, the hardcore wrestling fans, I think, for the most part these days. Um, but as for Mania itself, I did see uh, on, on Twitter, I think uh, Thurston, Brandon Thurston, WrestleNomics, on his, uh, that, that, uh, that, that Twitter page, uh, he posted the latest uh, screenshots from, like, Ticketmaster or, or StubHub or whatever. And it's not sellout, but there, there there's, you know, there are some seats there. But for the most part, it's going to be, you know, for what they can sell, it's going to look pretty good, I think. Um, and I think they'll get into it too. I think the fans get into it. Uh, we saw with AEW, you know, when they, they when they have live shows with with fans there, the fans get into it. And they're, you know, they support it as much as they can. Obviously, this is a much larger scale. Um, but as far as like independent versus casual, I, I don't know about that. Um, I don't know if if the casual wrestling fan will risk, you know, getting COVID or, or you know, risk you know, getting another disease really that can you have WrestleMania week in, in a normal <laughs> year. Um, but, um, but I mean, it's, it's also Florida too. So 
yeah, that's that's a whole that's a whole other factor. I guess, it is a different, it's, yeah, so. it's certainly a different universe down there. Yeah, and the, and the other thing too is we're, we're kind of in uncharted waters too with the two nights of, of WrestleMania. And obviously, a, a standard kind of pre-COVID WrestleMania weekend would in, involve like an NXT show, and 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 you know, recent times would have a SmackDown in a big basketball arena that would do pretty well. It would have an NXT Takeover in a big basketball arena and that would do well. Your big stadium WrestleMania, and then the next day, obviously a Raw uh, back in you know a basketball arena or whatever, which would always did pretty well. This is interesting too because we're getting back to back nights in Raymond James stadiums, back to back kind of stadium shows. Uh, so that'll be a little fascinating to see that. And also kind of the noise level as well. We've been kind of used to, at least WWE fans have been used to the, this, the weird hum of, you know, the Thunderdome or whatever. Now we're going yeah. into a stadium that's going to be, I mean, a big giant football stadium with 25% capacity. That's going to be kind of weird. So I, I am, I am very curious as well, how much crowd sweetening that, uh, that, that, that they do here, because obviously, I mean, Look at the Thunderdome, look at the Capitol Wrestling Center, all that sort of stuff. There's no doubt in my mind that WWE has gotten very used to that, you know, hit the big button for heel, hit the big button for face hey, type ooh, stuff. So, yeah, like, yeah. I, I can definitely see them having that temptation to, you know, say, okay, what does it sound like? And, oh, it doesn't sound good enough. Okay, let's, you know, crank the volume up, crank the volume up, crank the volume up. And then you wonder how much of an authentic experience you're really going to get. I have no idea. I mean, th- that's kind of my biggest thing that I'm interested about WrestleMania this year. Not so th- not so much <laughs> as many of the matches, which we'll get to uh, here in a bit, but just, like, what it all looks like, how it all is, you know, just how the setup is, what the crowd looks like, what the crowd sounds like, just all that stuff fascinates me. And it's just so, it's the great unknown and the reminds me of the olden days, Andrew, with people and stadiums and shows and wrestling. <laughs> oh, those were the days, Rich. Those were the, were the days. But let's, uh, let's get to uh, the, so we've been kind of alluding to this quote unquote third night of uh, WrestleMania because this week uh, there will be announced that SmackDown is a special WrestleMania edition of SmackDown, which <laughs> I don't know exactly what that means, but what it means is the dorks are going to wrestle on SmackDown and not get WrestleMania paydays because we have a SmackDown Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Championship match because, yes, you at home do not know it, but I promise you, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode, the dogs, are the SmackDown Tag the Dirty teams. Dogs. The dirty Dogs, baby. I'm sorry. The, the, not, dirty not, the dogs. not the ROH Dogs. The Dirty Dogs, correct. <laughs> uh, Dolph Ziggler and, and, and Robert Roode are your uh, your SmackDown Tag Team Champions, and they're going to defend it, uh, those titles, in a fatal four-way against the Street Profits, Ray and Dominic Mysterio, and Otis and Chad Gable. My goodness. What a parade of dorks. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, this is this is great. This is I love just the idea of two nights of WrestleMania, two big shows, and yet sorry guys, you're on SmackDown. And it's it's but a title it's match a WrestleMania too, so it's like, edition of SmackDown. Exactly, true. yes. See? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's different. That's, that's the best part too, yeah. <laughs> it's bigger. It's is it still in the Thunderdome? Well, yeah, of course. Is it still SmackDown? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's got to stink for these guys. But uh, not worse. Worse off, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal also moved to the WrestleMania edition of SmackDown. And uh, are you ready to get very depressed, Andrew? Have you taken your uh, <laughs> your meds? And <laughs> Are you okay? Are you ready for this? Let's just just do it. Just okay. Rip the band-aid off. All right. So here do it is. It these are your participants so far, your announced participants in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Akira Tozawa. Angel Garza, Cedric Alexander, Drew Gulak, four amazing pro wrestlers already, unbelievable, Elias, Eric, Grand Metallique, Humberto Carrillo, Jackson Riker, Jey Uso, Kalisto, King Corbin, Lince Dorado, Mace, all caps of course, uh, Murphy, Mustafa Ali, Rick O'Shea, Shelton Benjamin, Shinsuke Nakamura, Slapjack, in all caps, T-Bar, and old Tucky himself, Tucker. You could make <laughs> an amazing wrestling company out of a base of like eleven or twelve of those guys alone. I mean, it's it's insane just that these guys are goddamn geeks in this company. Like this is <laughs> they should rename this the Hiroki Goto Memorial Battle Royal because <laughs> yes. these guys are just a bunch of goddamn geeks. And I like you said, uh. I, I love these guys. Tozawa, Ricochet, Gulak, Cedric. Nakamura, Murphy, Kalisto, Metalik. I mean, these are world class wrestlers, but in this stupid bullshit company, they are goddamn geeks. It's insane. Oh my god. Yeah. And the, sh- the, the honestly the Shinsuke Nakamura one's probably the most 
galling to me because I get I like I get why those other guys I understand like here Tozawa they think he's a dork or whatever Ricochet is again I I have no idea what they don't see in Ricochet but whatever but like Shinsuke like they push Shinsuke Nakamura too. they push him all year and then WrestleMania they're like ah we got it for you kid just go to the go to the battle royal like three years ago we were on this podcast talking about Nakamura after winning the Rumble facing AJ Styles for the WWE title in a main event. And now, not three years up. later, he's he's here. He's on he's on SmackDown WrestleMania. Yeah, Rich. not even not there even go, the buddy. dark match, not even the opener, not even the, the 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 piss break match on the WrestleMania edition of SmackDown. Yeah, that is. Uh, I'm already mad. I'm, I'm already mad. Sorry. God damn it! <laughs> I told you to take your meds. I told you. <laughs> that would suck in. Yeah, you'll be good here a little bit. But anyway, that is the uh, that is the WrestleMania edition of SmackDown. Probably some more stuff getting added to that as well. We re- we are recording this as Raw is about to start here, so it's a good chance a women's tag match somehow ends up here. There's a good chance something else ends up here. I have no idea, but as far as we know, these are the two matches as of this recording uh, that will unfortunately be on the Wrestle. Mania edition of SmackDown. So let's move over to night one, uh, April 10th. So obviously we were in Saturday and Sunday here uh, for WrestleMania. I'm going to really quickly go over the matches, then we'll kind of, you know, we'll, we don't have to necessarily go one by one, but we'll kind of pick out some 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 stuff to talk about each one. Uh, so night one, I, I do like that these cards, I, I will give it up for these cards being only six matches long. I do enjoy that. I'd be pretty cool if they can get in and out of here in about two and a half hours to three hours. That is that, a plus. That yeah, yeah. might be asking too much, but I think there seems to be a conscious effort to do that on the, on these nights, which is smart. Uh, especially with the first, you know, outdoor, big outdoor crowds, all that sort of stuff. I like how condensed these shows are. So night one, uh, Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair for the SmackDown Women's title. Uh, Bobby Lashley defending the WWE Championship against Drew McIntyre. Bad Bunny versus The Miz. Uh, the New Day defending their Raw Tag Team titles against AJ Styles and Omos. Braun Strowman versus Shane McMahon in a steel cage match. And Cesaro versus Seth Rollins. So uh, what's got you excited? What's got you feeling jazzed for... Night one of WrestleMania 37, Andrew. <laughs> well, here's my recurring, uh, I guess, motif or my recurring thought about about these shows, both of them, is that on paper, there's some really good stuff here. There, Like Sasha versus Bianca, Drew versus Bobby Lashley, Cesaro versus, uh, versus Seth. That sounds pretty good on paper. The problem is that it's WWE and their presentation and their booking and – the context of it all, it does suck a lot of the juice out of it for me. Now, I, I am confident that if they go in the ring and have a, just a great match, Sasha and Bianca, they can knock it out of the park. You know, Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre, just these two big muscle men clanging it out, that could be a great match. Cesaro and Seth could be a great match. Um, but when you have Reginald and the Hurt Business breaking up for no reason – and Seth Rollins being the most annoying dweeb in the world, that stuff does kind of, you know, it, it does take a hit, I think, there, Rich. So. No, it, it definitely does. And I think it, it, it it's a problem with WWE is the roster, and we we've, we've, we've say it all the time, it's, it's one of the best rosters ever assembled in wrestling history, if not the best wrestler, uh, roster. I mean, we just talked about a bunch of dorks, and you said you, could, you and I could take six of those dorks, seven of those dorks, ten of those, you know, whatever those, any number of those dorks, just basically not Tucker and <laughs> not King Corbin, and make like a goddamn good indie show with them. And Jackson Riker, he can hit the bricks too, too. But uh, like, there's so many good, I mean, those guys, and they're just not even on the show. And then you look at this, and yeah, there is a lot to like about this show, but there's always this sort of malaise over everything that they, they, they do. And that's kind of been a problem with WWE over the last few years. And it's not just the COVID thing. It, it started about 2000, like late 2018, uh, most of 2019 as well, is that even these, these the cream rising to the top and, and good matches happening just because they're good wrestlers, somehow that just stopped, even though it, it really should never have stopped. And, and now we've reached a point where the pay-per-views usually don't deliver on a level that they should. And you look at them on paper and go, well, yeah, there we go. Like Cesaro and Seth, those are two tremendous pro wrestlers. But, you know, Cesaro is the swing guy and Seth Rollins is a dork who wears weird suits. Like, you know, yeah. Sasha and Bianca, that should be, you know, a straight wrestling match. But then there's Reginald. Like, how is Reginald going to get involved? Like, Can why? they coexist? Right. Like, Can they coexist? Right. I don't want to know about Reginald. I just want to watch Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair fight for a title. There's there's Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre. Well, that's all clouded with the, you know, the, the breakup of the Hurt Business. And where does MVP's allegiance lie? And is are the Hurt King Business going to get involved? King Corbin added as well. I mean, right, it's... right. Oh, yeah, yeah. King Corbin getting involved. And it's just like, oh, my God. Like, okay. Like, like, all right. Yeah, by this recording, King Corbin might, it might be a fucking triple threat with King Corbin. Who the hell knows uh, <laughs> oh, at, at this point? And then, like, you know, 
the other matches are, are, are just kind of showcase matches here. Bad Bunny versus The Miz. It's hard to really get super excited about that because you know that there's a cap on, you know, Bad Bunny's in-ring uh, uh, prowess and, and also The Miz's uh, to an extent as well. And then, like, I would rather do anything else in the world than watch a steel cage match between Braun Strowman uh, and Shane McMahon. And the build has been Shane telling Braun he's stupid and Braun saying, no, I'm not. <laughs> it's <just> like, what <laughs> are we doing? What is this? And there's train noises and there's slime and, and hopscotch, I think there and was. And Shane's going to do something stupid and nearly kill himself just so his dad gives him a hug. And it's so sad. It's just, I can't watch <laughs> Shane McMahon matches anymore. Because you know he's just like, oh, dad's going to love this. Dad's going to definitely give me a hug now. And it's just like, you know, put her hero pal. Good match. <laughs> like, yeah, good job, buddy. Yeah, yeah. As he taps him on the shoulder. Yeah, yeah, all right. He's 51. He's 51. He still has to do this stuff. Give the man a Come hug. Come on. <laughs> Just say I love you, son. That's all we. That's all he needs. <laughs> all he needs is a hug and a pat on the back while you're hugging him, and say I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Support for the Voices of Wrestling WrestleMania weekend previews also come from our friends at Express VPN, the world's largest premium VPN service provider, founded all the way back in 2009. One of the most reliable VPNs. You can find over 3,000 servers in 160 VPN server locations in over 94 countries. Easy to use apps for Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS, as well as platforms that other VPN companies do not support. Linux, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, routers, browser extensions for Chrome and Firefox. It is the only provider that unblocks streaming services, not just on the VPN, but also using media streamer on devices like Apple TV, PlayStation, Xbox, and smart TVs, ExpressVPN has best in-class encryption and allows you to access content anywhere free of geo restrictions. Use it on Disney+, Hulu, HBO Max, Netflix, and most importantly, WWE Network. So if you're, wanted ready, if you're ready to ditch Peacock, you're not really loving what you're seeing out of Peacock, ExpressVPN can help you. VoicesOfWrestling.com slash Express is how you can sign up today. Access WWE Network from anywhere in the world. That's not America, because well, we're stuck with Peacock right now. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, Blazing Fast Speed's 24-7 customer support through their live chat. Unconditional 30-day money-back guarantee, so if things do not work for you, you can't get it to work. Their support chat can't help you. Unconditional 30-day money-back guarantee. You can also have five simultaneous connections as well. A uh, huge network, as we said, of VPN servers. Works on every device. Works on Netflix. World-class privacy and security. Unblocks popular services. You can stream sports directly as well if you're an LB fan. Uh, obviously, we mentioned this with LB you know, kicking off hot and heavy. Great opportunity to, hey, you're, you're in your local market. You can't watch an MLB, MLB TV. That's not true. You can watch with Express uh, VPN. They also have a wide range of payment methods, including international credit cards, PayPal, Bitcoin, UnionPay, Alipay, and all the other good stuff as well. You can sign up on your terms as well as they have year plans, one month plans, uh, additional shorter plans as well. So whatever you want to do, whatever plan wants to work for you, they will make it work. Again, as we said, 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee and 24-7 customer support through live chat. So ExpressVPN uh, can get you back to your normal WWE network and can do so much more for you as well. Voicesofwrestling.com slash express is how you're going to get started there. Voicesofwrestling.com slash express is how you get started on ExpressVPN. We thank them, of course, for their support of the WrestleMania Weekend Preview Series. <laughs> oh, God. So I, I, let, let's talk about the big match here, the the the, the two you know main uh, uh, championships here, the SmackDown Women's title. Sasha Banks, obviously the champion coming in against Bianca Belair. A lot of people predicting Belair probably getting the win here. Just seems like a good time for them to do that, of kind of a feel-good moment. Uh, but, you know, I think the same thing with Bobby Lashley or, or with Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre, that Drew's probably getting that title and probably holding the title up as well. So is it something that you think that they would avoid in having one of these people, you know, not retain or having both of the feel-good stories uh, end out this WrestleMania show? They've done the feel-good stories in the past on, on this show um, before, of course. Um, I just, you know, I just worry that the recent trend of – you know, the newcomer arrives on WrestleMania and, and they get, they lose, but it's okay. Cause they're on WrestleMania. That's, that's the rub pal. Um, I think Jeff Hawkins brought that up at the same point on shake them ropes recently. Um, as you saw like last year with Rhea Ripley, you know, she's on mania, but she loses, even though she probably should have won that match. Um, Oscar a few years before that losing to Charlotte, um, 
there's a pattern there, I think there. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I, I would hope that they, you know, they go all the way with Bianca. I think, I think it's a, you know, it's, it's let her, let her run with it. And Sasha, this is not a case where Sasha was champion for like four days or whatever. in it like, like before she's had the belt for quite a while now. And despite her being what, like when this at WrestleMania, um, I think, you know, there's a good chance she'll, she'll still go win this here. Um, so I think, I think they'll go with Bianca for this one. Yeah, I, I, I kind of think so as well. And there's been some some interesting debates about maybe, you know, having Drew McIntyre be the first guy out and having this be the opening match, the WWE Championship opening uh, WrestleMania. I know Drew had a little video earlier today where he said, oh, I'd love to open WrestleMania or whatever. And that might be because a lot of the stuff lately has been making sure that the crowd doesn't boo Drew McIntyre. And a lot of <laughs> yeah. like I, I don't know why Vince is just convinced for some reason that the crowd is going to shit on Drew McIntyre uh, uh, for some reason. So I could definitely see them doing that. And it seemed that, that Drew was kind of putting some hints there. Uh, on, 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 I think it was on a YouTube video or some interview today. So I would really be interested to see uh, what they do. Because I think if you want to make sure that Drew gets cheered and that's your goal, then obviously have him be the opener, have him be the first guy out of the gates. Like we said, like no one's going to boo. The first, yeah, they're going to fall exactly the way you want them to for the first you know 20 minutes of the show. After that, who the hell knows? Then they might start shitting on stuff and doing their own thing. But uh, yeah, I could definitely see Drew you know, in the opener winning the title and then in the main event or whatever as a way to kind of say, hey, the symbolic you know main event to night one is you know by, Bianca Belair also getting that same moment. So there's at least space between, you know, the two feel good moments where, you know, Drew right. does it in the opener, right. BL, uh, Belair does it in, in, in the closer. So it doesn't feel like you're doing kind of back to back stuff. And, and, and at, at the end of the day, just don't, don't not think yourself guys. Just that's the, the best story to tell is Drew wins the title and Bianca wins the title. Just, that's okay. It's just, it's okay to do that. <laughs> so anything else about uh, night one? Uh, I'm just curious about how uh, the two, uh, the two debut guys here, uh, bad bunny, and uh, almost do, um, especially Bad Bunny, because at least almost has some experience in NXT in the Largo Loop, I think. But uh, Bad Bunny, he's coming in fresh here, and uh, this could either be really good or really bad, depending on, on how it goes. And um, I just hope that the, the Miz has his uh, best catching gloves on, so and then oh, nothing bad happens with uh, Mr. Bunny. So <laughs> yeah. no promises there, but you know, you, you hope so at least. Yeah, the, the problem though is there, and I've seen a lot of stuff that unfortunately, like the wrestlers are really starting to hype up and, and talk. Oh, Bad Bunny's been at the Performance Center. He's doing this. He's doing that. Like I wouldn't do any of that. I would just go in and not leave it in people with zero expectations, and then have him like you know burst through those expectations by just doing anything. You, you know what I mean? Like doing if you come in and say, hey, this guy, uh, he's just fresh off the and then he does a cross body or whatever. You're like, oh, hey, no, that's not bad. But like, they're they're unfortunately they're going the other direction and saying, oh no, he's been training, he's been working his ass off, he's doing all this, and it's like, eh, you better be better be careful, especially with somebody like the Miz uh, in there. And and another thing as well, I mean, this is it, it, it probably can't be understated that these everybody on the show is working in front of fans for the first time in a year and a half, like a year, basically a year plus yeah. like that, that there's gotta be jitters as well of just like, Oh, we're not in, you know, the Thunderdome. This can't be edited. We can't, you know, change anything. I mean, this is in front of fans again. And, and, you know, for bad bunny, it's probably not a, a, a big deal. He's played in front of obviously huge, huge, huge crowds, but I'm just kind of curious how that affects people as well. Of just that, that weirdness of, Oh wait, there's people here again, or Oh wait, it's not just us in our little self-contained warehouse anymore or self-contained little arena. So, uh, that'll be definitely interesting to see, and almost I'm I'm very curious on because if they're smart, they know exactly what to do with him, and I I, I hope that they're smart enough to know kind of what to do with this guy. And obviously with with Kofi and Xavier and AJ Styles and so many talented wrestlers in that match, there's a way to book almost and and, and make it work. And I just hope yeah that that they do that, but you never know mm-hmm. with, with WWE these days. So yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Kofi and Xavier will bump like crazy for the guy. So because um they'll make him look good, I think. Yeah, those are two great guys to, like to have yeah. against. Yeah, those are two great guys yeah. to be in the ring against. So you know who I you know who I feel bad about actually. Sorry, sorry, to interrupt you. No, no, you're good. Um, D- Damian Priest. Like, imagine getting the call up at the Rumble, and it's Mania season. You're ready to go, and you have to second Bad Bunny to ringside instead of actually wrestling a match. Like, I'm sure it's cool for him because it's like it's Bad Bunny gets the publicity that way. But it's WrestleMania. You want to wrestle a match in WrestleMania, right? I mean. And the, the thing too is is the whole idea of 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 Bad Bunny being there. The idea is that you're trying to not just you know get eyeballs on the product, get people you know excited about wrestling, but also you know move that rub over to a Damian Priest, have people leave and go, hey, that Damian Priest guy is really cool, or hey, you know that, that you know whatever. And little by little, it's like less and less about Damian Priest, and he's basically a, a complete non factor in this match. Mm-hmm. And it's all about Bad Bunny. Whereas like every you know the optics would kind of tell you you'd either want to have it be a tag match 
or you know Damian Priest comes out with you know Cindy you know kind of the Cindy Lauper thing in WrestleMania one where it's you know sh- you know Bad Bunny is seconding Damian Priest and that's kind of the rub there but they've decided to go in the direction of and obviously they feel confident enough about Bad Bunny but at the end of the day I just don't see who that benefits and it, it certainly probably will not benefit Damian Priest I don't think in a year's time mm-hmm. we're gonna say oh man. Just remember how awesome it was when Damian Priest came out with Bad Bunny, and that just launched his career when he's standing outside the ring while Bad Bunny does cross body blocks to the Miz and, and, and John Morrison. You know, it's just like I, I don't know, not not the way I would do it, but uh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they'll do something where Damian Priest does something cool to John Morrison or whatever, some big choke slam or, or what have you, or kick. But at the same time, you could do that in a tag match, right? So it's like if you want to you know feature this guy and have him get like a nice little rub, put him in a tag match with Bad Bunny. That that's fine. And it saves Bad Bunny from, you know, any, you know, potential risk of being in a singles match with The Miz. So um, you could just do that way, I guess. But uh, oh, I guess I guess not. So, yeah. There and and I, there's been some theory that, like, John Morrison's pretty hurt and that's why it's not a tag match anymore. But I say uh, just do The Miz and John Morrison and just have The Miz never tag John Morrison. In. He just gets his ass kicked by Bad Bunny and Damian Priest for five minutes. Damian Priest chokeslams him. Bad Bunny does some funny thing off the top rope. One, two, three. Like, there we go. You know, they're, they're dorks. It's The Miz and John Morrison. They're dancing around in bunny outfits. Like, they don't need offense. You know? John Morris can sit on the outside. The Miz can try to go towards him. And Damian Priest just beats him up, beats him up, beats him up until Bad Bunny comes in, in and does something. I mean, no, just overthink stuff. Way too much in this company. And, and wrestling is pretty easy. You just can do easy stuff. But uh, let's talk about night two here, which I think is the more complete night, the night that I am definitely looking forward to a little bit more. Just a, a, a few matches I think have a little bit more stakes and, and a few things I'm a little bit more interested in in night one. Uh, so night two is obviously on the 11th, uh, April 11th here. You have Roman Reigns defending the Universal Championship against Edge and Daniel Bryan. We'll talk about that match here in a bit. You have Asuka defending the Raw Women's title against Rhea Ripley. Uh, the Fiend... Versus Randy Orton in what is just described right now as a singles match. God only knows what that might entail. Uh, Big E defending the IC title against Apollo Crews. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn with Logan Paul, of course. And then for the WWE United States Championship, Riddle versus Sheamus. So let's talk about that triple threat match, obviously, first and foremost. Roman Reigns, Edge, and then Daniel Bryan as well. I, I cannot believe we're in this situation again <laughs> where Daniel Bryan, it seems so many years ago, 2014, when Daniel Bryan had to get shoehorned in because they were not sure, uh, you know, the reaction that the, the Batista Randy Orton uh, one was going to get. Batista wins the Royal Rumble. There's that uneasiness about Batista and Randy Orton. Sounds a lot like WrestleMania 34 here, and we are, we're here. It's Edge versus Roman Reigns. They have no confidence, obviously, in Edge anymore. Reigns is supposed to be the heel. They have to insert Daniel Bryan here to hopefully get people to cheer. I, I don't I don't is it gonna work? Like what it's a lot of work here to get to their intended desire of, of whatever this match is gonna be. But what do you make of, of everything that's gone in to this match and the different twists and turns we've we've had to get here? <laughs> it's amazing. Time is a flat circle. It, it's incredible. Like twenty fourteen, seven years ago, they had to add Daniel Bryan to the main event title match because the guy they brought back as a legend, Batista, as a face. He won the Royal Rumble and was rejected and they had to turn him heel and make it a triple threat match. And now it's seven years later and it's the same freaking thing with edge, the same thing. It's amazing how they they couldn't manage to do the easiest story in the world, which is retired veteran comes back out of retirement for one last shot at glory. That's such an easy story to do. And they still couldn't manage to do it whether it's Edge's fault for not being as, as popular as they think he is, whether it's their fault for the storytelling, I don't know, but still, it just didn't work. So now Dana, Dana Bryan's here to save the day once again, and it's just amazing how, you know, uh, th- those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it, Rich, I guess. I guess yeah, instead of just so. pushing Daniel Bryan at any point over these last seven years, it's, it's just always the, you know, <laughs> pull for, you know, in, in case of fire uh, situation here. So Daniel Bryan inserting himself uh, into this triple threat. As far as the result, I mean, where, where do you see this going? Do you see Roman Reigns retaining the title? Do you see the story of Edge finally doing it and, and, and winning, even though he kind of turned heel as well over the last few days, or he's, at least he's deranged and broken or whatever. He's not the happy-go-lucky Edge that we saw when he returned. Uh, Daniel Bryan's just kind of Daniel Bryan, a guy that they've been beating left and right for months now and now have to kind of rely on him to be in this main event. Like, Where, where do you see this match going? Do you, do you see Reigns uh, retaining this and, and, and you know still being champion at the end of WrestleMania? I think if Edge was still just a proper face, I think there's a very good chance he'll win this. Because uh, I'll credit Shake Them Ropes once again. They reminded me that this show, this this WrestleMania Night 2 show, will be 10 years to the day 
that Edge gave up the world title and retired. And I could see them, you know, Edge hits the spear, wins the match, confetti falls down, the pyro goes off, and Michael Cole is, or whoever is screaming, it's 10 years ago, Edge had to retire, and 10 years later, he's, he's back on top of the mountain. I could see that playing out if he was still a face. But now that he's, you know, attacked Daniel Bryan, and now he's this kind of much angrier guy, I don't know. I, I think it's a lot more likely that, yeah, someone like a Roman Reigns, they, they might keep the belt on him. And they'll they'll spin it off into maybe an Edge versus Brian feud proper and have Reigns go on to do something else. So I'm leaning at this point. I'm, I am leaning more towards Roman Reigns at this point. So I am too. Yeah, I would I would have thought of no doubt. I mean, after the Royal Rumble and, and pretty much every week until like, you know, two weeks ago, I'd said there's no doubt that the story is Edge, you know, overcomes the injuries. He does it, you know, years and years. And you said exactly 10 years, which I, I didn't even realize that. So good, good pull by the Shake Them Ropes guys on that. Like, I had no idea it was even 10 years. I mean, that's just even better of a story to have it. And there's no doubt that that was the story they wanted to tell. And then for, like you said, for whatever reason, in multitude of reasons, that's not the story anymore. And now as we're getting to this week, it's like, I don't know if I want Edge as my champion. I don't really. And like <laughs> Dana Bryan, I guess. But like, that just kind of seems like lame. at this point, just... I just have Reigns retain it. There's just no reason I think to, to to switch that title because I yeah I just have no confidence that Edge really can can make it happen, and I have no confidence that the fans are going to be super super into Edge. And I don't know. I mean, it, it's possible that they're playing you know, like these this even more level of chess where hey, if we have Edge be a heel, then the fans are really going to cheer <laughs> type stuff. Yes. So I don't. Golly knows what goes on backstage or in the mind of a Vince McMahon, and it's just it'd be nice if they had any sort of connection with this fan base whatsoever to actually tell the story that they want as opposed to having to play these games. So I I don't know. I like is this a long Ploy to have Edge be uh, have a heel sort of persona, and then the fans are going to cheer that, or are they just going to chant Daniel Bryan no matter what, and they're going to cheer for him no matter what? I, I or maybe they'll cheer Roman Reigns now that he's a heel. Like it's so weird, and I have no idea. But I am I'm definitely fascinated by this match and 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 how it plays out, and and who the fans root for, and just how it all goes, and how it's all booked. So um, the actual in ring work itself, it's a triple threat match, so there's always kind of a to me a cap on it. But I'm fascinated by everything else besides you know the in, the in ring and the bell to bell for this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Asuka versus Rhea Ripley, the uh, the Raw Women's Title. Uh, we just got word. I, I just saw it as of this recording that uh, Rhea Ripley's uh, theme song will be played live uh, as well at the show. So that's sometimes a good indication that you're probably going over. But I mean, I would have not always. Yeah, not always. And I would have definitely bet my mortgage last year that Rhea Ripley was going to go over. So, uh, what do you think uh, in this one? Does she go? You know, zero for two back to back manias here, where she she gets all the pop and circumstance, gets the kind of quote unquote big debut. Uh, and then blows it at, at WrestleMania. Well, just going off my own memory, Joan Jett played Ronda Rousey live in Mania a few years ago, and she lost. Right. Um, I think, uh, who was it? Um, I can't remember the guitarist's name, but she played Nakamura live during his match at WrestleMania a few years ago, and he lost. Uh, Mania 30, uh, they played Wyatt's theme live and Orton's theme live, and they both lost. So <laughs> it's not a good sign there, Rich. Yeah, um, WrestleMania 17, didn't uh, Motorhead play Triple H on, and then he lost to Taker, right? Yep, he lost yeah. too. There, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. I, 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 again, I hope that they don't do two years in a row where Rhea comes in and she loses. Um, I mean, this time it's a little bit different because there's fans there, and maybe they don't, re- they don't remember her... Losing to Charlotte, perhaps, and this is like her on the main roster now instead of NXT. Um, so, mm, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'll go with Rhea, but I would not be shocked if Oscar retains. Yes, yeah, to me, it's a real coin flip. Like I, I, I if yeah. I was booking, I'd, I'd definitely have Rhea do it. But, but you know, have, that company thinks a little bit differently, and they they kind of like the story of of the underdog and you know, kind of losing your big one and then kind of building yourself back up or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would definitely do Rhea, but I, I feel like it's it's literally a coin flip at this point, and and I don't know that I have a good read uh, on it. I mean, it just it seems so simple to have Rhea do it, but this is a company that usually uh, avoids the simple. And uh, speaking of the fiend with Alexa Bliss versus Randall Orton, uh, Andrew, what is this going to be? It says singles match. They've burnt each other on fire, they've eaten each other, there's been holograms, there's been doppelgangers, there's been uh, bl- black goo, there's been resurrections, there's been holes in the ring, there's been, I mean, if we go back even further to the canon of, uh, the, you know, of Ray Wyatt and Randy Orton, there's been cockroaches, there's been Firefly Funhouses, there's cabins been, burned down, there's been cabins, there's been- like, yeah, there is a lot here. 
I, sperm snakes on the ramp. It, it's a whole nine yards. There's yeah. just so the lore is just unbelievable. It, 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 it never ends here. Uh, this is promoted as just a single a wrestling match, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to see you know any top you know arm drags or power double tie ups to start. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, <laughs> test of strength. <laughs> I mean, I don't. What is this going to be? I mean, we we can't really do too much, can we? I mean, we're in front of crowds now. I, I it's, guess it's a live so. show. I, I assume it's going to be you know. I assume they're just going to play it straight as much as they can in this case. Um, maybe they teach Alexa how to do, you know, a fireball in live instead of, you know. Always works on wrestling but, as well. Fireballs oh, yeah, in wrestling that's, always that's work always, well. That's always great, yeah. But I, I'm just as curious as you are for this one because, you know, we've had cinematic stuff. We've had taped stuff. We've had possessions. We've had fires and, and, and we've had – Black goo and, and doppelgangers and all that stuff you mentioned, but for the blow off, this is a, presumably the blow off. I, I, I assume. God, I hope so. Jesus Christ, I hope so. I hope. I hope, and I assume. <laughs> what do you do? How do you top all that we've seen so far on a show in front of fans in a singles match, quote unquote singles match? What do you do, Rich? I am just as stumped as you are. Yeah, you do a, 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 a you know a wrist lock, a you know a top wrist lock, a, <laughs> you know, headlocks, you know, right? <laughs> a side headlock to really you know keep the fiend grounded. I that's and this is the problem when you go to the the farcical when you go to the you know people being able to teleport and resurrect themselves is that when you promote a match and they have to come down to the ramp and enter a ring and have a match in front of crowds, it's like well how do you how do you do that? So I, I, it'll be very fascinating to me how they transition into this because you know now you you can't do the stuff you've been doing for the last year basically with with with, with the fiend. I mean that that stuff is pretty much over, and there's a lot you still can do. There's a bunch of dumb stuff because we've seen them do dumb stuff with these guys literally you know, between Bray and Randy Orton. But you know how much I really I think what I'm more fascinated about more than anything is is the fan reaction to the fiend. Like <laughs> in our little circle, it's a big giant fucking joke, and we realize how stupid it is, but. Because it is, it's it's ridiculous and stupid. But like, you're I'm traveling to Florida during co- during a pandemic to go to WrestleMania. Fans, do they think the Fiend's awesome? Are they in the lore? Like, or do we have a bunch of you know replica belt, you know Fiend replica belt, five thousand dollar Fiend replica belt people that are out there? Like, that's what I'm more fascinated about. Do those people think the Fiend is fucking awesome and are gonna love whatever happens on this, as opposed to you know what we all sort of think of the Fiend these days? I I, I I'm I'm I have no that's... idea. I'm very very curious on this. That's a good point because we've been without a year of fans reacting to The Fiend live. And we haven't seen fans react live to Alexa Bliss in this persona either. So I am very curious to see how they react to that because remember, I believe technically The Fiend and Alexa are supposed to be the good guys here. Yes. And Randy right. is the bad guy. Randy so- is the man who's trying to stop this uh- – murder clown from you know <laughs> how to file murder clown uh he is a bad guy because he he punted people sometimes you know many many years ago so he is in, indeed the bad guy and the fiend and alexa are the faces so yeah i uh i don't know i mean something is going to yeah. definitely be projected onto that mat i think we can guarantee that but other than that i don't know how much else they do unless it just goes to a pre-tape but i think they would they would have they would have called it something right they would have said that this is a, a firefly funhouse death match or there's something it would have been something and this just says it's yeah. just a singles match it's just the fiend versus randy orton in a pro wrestling match is all we have right now so i don't know yeah the uh, the, the fiend finale or something like that i don't know yeah, yeah right yeah it's very yeah, strange. And then, yeah cuz then it would make total sense that randy orton you know lights him on fire and puts him in a rocket ship that you know, flies to the moon <laughs> and explodes or whatever you know just to like try to find it like, cuz i mean what else could you do to this guy I mean, he's 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 survived many many deaths yeah uh, over alexa, the last year alexa alexa's Alexa's bathed and lied. I'm free. Thank you, Randy, for freeing me. <laughs> it's right. Yeah, it's yeah. roll. It's it's a whole. Yeah, yeah. And I guess they could try to do that in this arena. I I suppose, but I that's it's real ballsy, and I don't. Yeah, I, I so I, I cannot wait to see yeah, top wrist locks and arm tracks and rope <laughs> breaks and stuff uh, in, in this match. But uh, three more matches here. We'll, we'll quickly go over these. Uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn with the inclusion of Logan Paul. So it's amazing that Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, this all time great pro wrestling feud. This you know one of the, one of the the pinnacle wrestling feuds of the last decade plus, and here they are just in a WrestleMania match, thrown together a week prior, and then somehow shoehorned one Logan Paul into it as well. So, um, yeah, I don't know if this <laughs> if this was like five years ago, this would have wet my whistle, but like today, after seeing you know injuries and he's become this just annoying little weirdo with conspiracy theories and documentaries and Logan Paul being involved, I just I, I don't care like. The, the days of Kevin Steen and El Generico 
are a decade ago at this mm-hmm. point. And the days of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and NXT TakeOver in those days is almost a decade ago as well. So uh, it's – yeah, it's just – you throw your hands up and say, what have you become, guys? What, what have you become? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's so sad to see. Uh, and then Big E uh, and Apollo Crews for the IC title, then Riddle versus Sheamus for the U.S. title. Do you have any kind of interest in those matches or, or, or some any any sort of uh, excitement for, for Big E and Apollo or, or Riddle versus Sheamus? Well, you left out, Rich, the very most important detail about Big E and Apollo Crews. It's going to be not just a match. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's going to be I don't have that in my a Nigerian yet. drum fight, baby. Let's so, go. Well, I guess now the, the great follow-up question to that is, what is your favorite prior Nigerian drum match? You can only pick one, by the way. So just one, your favorite prior uh, Nigerian drum match. Oh, man. There was a great one about, I'd say, 16 years ago or so. I want to say it was between, I think it was between Tommy Dreamer (laughs) and who was the opponent? Rodney Mack. They had a great Nigerian drum fight, but this one, it could top it, I think, for sure. It, it really could, yeah. So uh, you, you obviously an expert of Nigerian drum matches. What's, uh, what entails a Nigerian drum match? Well, as Apollo said during his promo when he introduced it, uh, a Nigerian drum fight is when two wrestlers beat each other up so badly, it sounds like a drum. Mm. Now, <laughs> <Cool>. it being <laughs> WWE... I'm going to make a very reasonable assumption, say that they will bring out drums. The whole ring will have drums around it for sure, right? Yes. Yeah, there'll be 30 drums. (laughs) There's no (laughs) doubt about it. (laughs) I'm going to make that assumption, I think, about that. Um, But I also imagine it's just going to be like a no DQ match, maybe. I don't know. Um, So we'll we'll see what happens with this Nigerian drum fight, Rich. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely, and then Riddle versus Sheamus in the. Uh, I, I mean, this could this could end in three seconds. It could it could Ooh, be a good match. A shit. I, yeah, I, it could be really good because both these wrestlers are good, or it can end in two seconds when Sheamus punts Riddle's head off and pins him. And and uh, yeah, who knows? Who the hell knows with Riddle uh, who cares? these days? Who but, yeah, and, and also, more importantly. Who cares? So thank you. <laughs> you did definitely know it there. <laughs> so that is WrestleMania. So if we didn't get you excited for two nights, technically three nights uh, of WrestleMania 37, back in business, the uh, the subtitle here for this. Uh, I don't know what will, but uh, Andrew, as far as non WrestleMania, let, let, let's real quickly we'll end here with the, the you know talk about the weekend here a little bit. Is there a show? Is there a match? Is there something that you're looking forward to this weekend? Or are you just not quite sure what you're going to do with this WrestleMania weekend because how weird it is and how strange and, and 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 you know different this one is compared to you know prior WrestleMania weekends. Um, I mean, there's maybe some indie stuff I'm looking forward to. I think some some choice matches here and there. Uh, for the most part, though, I'm not really all that hyped up about it because the indies don't really, don't really like, get me up these days. Um, and there's also no, like, like I said earlier, no other major promotions running. There's no Impact. There's no ROH. There's no New Japan. No other you know companies like that. AEW is running a show, but it's a house show in, in Jacksonville. So that's out of the equation. Um, so besides that stuff, I mean, yeah, it's just it's th- the buzz isn't there for this one, Rich. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it, it's going to be tough, but uh, we hope that uh, obviously throughout the, <laughs> the hours and hours of uh, preview audio we've done, we've at least gotten you excited about uh, some of these shows or some of these matches, and and, and hopefully we did that. But uh, I don't know how well we did on, on WrestleMania getting you excited, <laughs> but you know what? You're going to watch it anyway. Who you know? Who are you yeah, kidding? Yeah, yeah. Know. <laughs> who are you kidding? You're going to turn it on anyway because you have nothing better to do. It's you're a wrestling fan. You're going to watch WrestleMania. Why not? So uh, anyway, I, I'm still excited about some parts and aspects of of uh, WrestleMania yeah, 37, yeah, despite yeah. you know maybe not being real into who wins and who's loses or the builds and all that sort of stuff. But uh, uh, Andrew, before we depart and before we say goodbye, uh, do you want to get your plugs out of the way again, including uh, the new episode of Music of the Mat? Sure. You can follow me on Twitter at Andrew T. Rich, and you can follow the podcast on Twitter at Music of the Mat. Uh, Music of the Mat is my wrestling music podcast. It's available on uh, Apple, Google, Spotify, all those places. Uh, comes out every other Tuesday. And uh, today, the new episode just dropped where it's me and Joe Gagne talking about WrestleMania, the album. Uh, so check that out. And also check out my writing at uh, VoicesOfWrestling.com. All right, Andrew, thank you so much for helping us preview WrestleMania. And thank you to everybody for helping us preview uh, WrestleMania weekend. Enjoy. Uh, and please, nobody get COVID if possible. <laughs> that, would be, that would be grand. But uh, we'll see. Anyway, Andrew, thank you so much. And uh, everybody, thank you, Rich. take care. We'll talk to you again next time. Bye. Support for Voices of Wrestling's WrestleMania Weekend Previews is brought to you by 
Manscaped, the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technology development to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide, and we have an exclusive offer for Voice of Wrestling WrestleMania weekend listeners 20% off plus free shipping with the code FLAGSHIP at manscaped.com. Again, 20% off plus free shipping with the code FLAGSHIP at manscaped.com. Manscaped has created the best ball hair trimmer ever, the Lawnmower 3.0. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology in addition this trimmer comes with an led light for a more precise shave and is also waterproof my favorite aspect of this entire thing to make your show uh, your shower shave clean and easy and uh, the lawnmower 3.0 comes in their brand new perfect package 3.0 which comes with everything you need to keep trimmed cut free and smelling nice down there the perfect package 3.0 includes the crop preserver an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer, as well as the Crop Reviver. This product, along with the Crop Preserver, will keep your balls from sweating, smelling, or sticking. Manscaped also throws in two additional gifts to this perfect package, a pair of high-performance Manscaped boxer briefs that will keep your junk feeling fresh all day, as well as a travel bag to store all of your grooming goodies. So let's, come on, guys. Let's trim that junk of yours. Get 20% off, plus free shipping with code flagship at manscaped.com your balls will thank you once again 20 percent off plus free shipping with code flagship at manscaped.com 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use promo code flagship unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with manscaped For the ones who know safety isn't a catchphrase, it's a culture. And the ones who help make sure everyone makes it home safe. For the safety-minded who watch everyone's backs, Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry, as well as safety assessments and training to keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.